Today we're going to talk about a scaled down version of the Woodpecker hit and miss engine. In particular we're going to talk about the Governor assembly. This Governor is a lot more complicated than uh, most hit and miss engine governors. It's actually driven off the cam gear instead of the crank. It turns half the speed of the crank. You have the two weights. The pivot points are here and here. This is actually the heavier side. It expands out as it spins. These little brackets here have adjustments so you can adjust the tension of this spring. These pivot points here allow the weights to rotate out. And there's a pin right here that protrudes through the back and through one of the holes in the cam gear. This pin here comes around and makes contact with this lockout lever. This lockout lever on the front has a spring and it has a plate here that comes down to lock out the exhaust valve or keep the exhaust valve open which is the miss cycle. Once the flywheel slows down to the speed necessary to make the lockout come out it fires again and the process starts over again. This right here is the points contact for the buzz coil. There's a screw at the top right here that makes contact with that piece of metal right there. And because these two pieces of insulation are separate, and this is just a flat piece, it can be loosened and adjusted up and down to time this to make contact with this when the engine is approximately top dead center. I'm going to rotate it now so you can see where that is. So, it's a little hard to see, but it's just before top dead center. Here's the crank here, the rod and the crank assembly. And it just barely touches that screw as it comes around. You can see right there, as the cam's opening it up, this lockout lever. See this pin right here protruding through the back mates up with this lockout lever and pushes this out. If it comes around fast enough, it holds that open, and as it comes back, it's a little hard to do this at a slow speed, but what happens is this piece gets caught underneath this, keeping the exhaust valve open. There are a lot of adjustments on this thing. Don't get the springs too loose. You want them fairly tight. There's a lot of force generated by this spinning and the centrifugal force of that. We'll expand that spring quite easily. You want to make sure this spring is tight enough to pull this back in alignment because if it isn't it may fire a couple times. It's going to be inconsistent. You aren't going to be able to get it run very well. And this right here is very important as well. This one's fairly easy to adjust while it's running. You can actually get to this one. These you can't adjust when it's running. It's even hard to get to with this flywheel on. 
I'm going to rotate this around so we can see the back side here a little bit. Actually take the camera off the mount. There is the pin right there. It ends up riding against this piece up here. You can hear the lockout lever click. It just disengaged. Every once in a while when it first starts to fire, it'll lock that lever out. And then you won't get a compression stroke and it won't fire again. What you have to do on that, pull this back around. Really, what's happening back here is that one pin hits the back of the lockout lever. Make sure this pin is assembled very tightly in there because if it comes loose and goes around and keeps hitting the lockout lever, it'll round that hole out and your lockout pin will fall out. And then you'll either have to remake this piece or modify it.